Before we begin this Thursday evening address, I want everyone to make sure that they're subscribed to the channel. If you're not subscribed, do so now. And if you're already subscribed, check to make certain that you are. Also, be sure to give the video a like. The white supremacists hate that. Now, that said, it's no secret that the coronavirus outbreak has caused a lot of disruption to the lives of a lot of people. And there's a lot of individuals and groups who are now attempting to get done and to lay the groundwork for things they intend to do, all of it under cover of chaos. But understand, this chaos is organized chaos. It's anything but random. For example, we've had a lot of white supremacists who have been backed up by some big money donors and they're saying that they want the lockdowns to end. What they really, of course, are getting across is they want the curtailment of white movement to end because that's what really irks them. That you got the state saying we're going to control people's movements. We're going to control where you can and cannot go. They're like, well, that's only supposed to be for black people. We're supposed to have black people under lock and key. It's supposed to be their movements that are in control. Uh, you're not supposed to be controlling our movements because that's what white supremacy is all about. It's about controlling the movements and actions of black people. Controlling where you can go, when you can go there, how, what, who you can associate with. That's what they are used to for only black people. And now what they're demanding is, hey, you're going to have to let up on us as white folks. This is only supposed to be for black people. Now, this is what they think they're doing, that they're reminding the administrative arm of white supremacy. Hey, don't forget whose team you're supposed to be on. Or at the very least, they're looking and going, hey, we're bristling under all of this. OK, fun's fun, but we've had enough. A number of white supremacists who have all had their Confederate flags out claim and making it very clear that this whole in the lockdown thing, this is a white supremacist front, plain and simple. They're not even trying to disguise it. I told you some months back about how you got this one gang of white supremacists, or at least this subculture of a subculture, calling themselves accelerationists. And they chose the name accelerationist for two reasons. First of all, they think that they're speeding up what they see as the inevitable collapse of a system that no longer kisses their behinds and treats them like the sun shines out of their hairy, worthless rear ends. But the second reason that they chose the term is the word accelerationist also applies to the term accelerant. Accelerant is any material used to cause a fire. Lighter, fluid, alcohol, that kind of thing. All of these are accelerants. So as these white supremacists see it, the current order of white supremacy doesn't favor them enough. They think it's in decline, meaning that the glory days of white supremacists being able to run up on black people, they think that that's under threat, or at least they're not able to enjoy it like they used to. So they want to hurry up and burn it down so they can reestablish a more brutal form of white control. As they see it, no more Mr. Nice Racist. Of course, they've never been nice, but in their minds, not being on a constant all-day white supremacist jihad, well, hell, that's the same as being pretty as you please. And the white media is attempting to help them do it. Absolutely no examination of these groups. Absolutely no circumspection. No critique at all. Just treating it as if, well, this is the natural result of so many people being hemmed in. Oh, this is just cabin fever on steroids. Nobody willing to say what's the most obvious thing of all. It hasn't even been five full years since the Mother Emanuel Church massacre, and yet the white media is pretending as if they don't see all those Confederate flags being waved out there, and, well, if they do see them, they don't assign any particular significance to them. Oh no, you see all these Confederate flags being waved in the air by a bunch of people saying we're going to liberate these states, and apparently that doesn't make them immediately think of the Confederacy. Apparently it doesn't mean anything. Yes, all of this deliberate myopia that the white media has decided that it's going to be suffering from, and you even have your black bootlicks, naturally, they ain't got nothing to say about it either. They're not making a big deal of it either. Yeah, white supremacy and all of its assorted operatives, apparatchiks, bootlicks, suck-ups, and, well and well-wishers, these guys are all getting on code about this. They see this as being just a stepping stone to finally cracking down on those Negroes who have been talking about reparations and talking about tangibles and threatening the system of white supremacy that they depend upon for every crumb of their daily bread. 
The white media is doing its part to lay the groundwork for what they hope is going to be a post-pandemic racial order. And that it's going to be business as usual for white citizens, but the lockdown is going to continue unabated where black people are concerned. That's what this is about. This is about trying to rationalize that we got to prepare the minds of the public for it. We got to condition them that, well, this disease, we can't really end the lockdown. Really, we can't completely end it. And well, there will have to be selective measures in place, you see. But but it's not because of race. It's because, well, it's because all these black people, they've got all these diseases, don't you know? And they'll just cut and paste the exact same lying script that they've been using to justify mass incarceration. And they'll say black people are disproportionately represented per capita, more likely to, etc., etc. In other words, statisticulation. I taught you about that word. Twisting and distorting and selectively cherry-picking bits and pieces of data out of context. This is how the sophisticated white supremacist tries to disguise their phony anti-black racism as being some sort of fact. This is how they try to go about it try to intellectualize their their psychopathic anti-black racism. Of course, they know it's a lie, but these lies are used to give legitimacy to very real aggression and attacks against us. This isn't about statistics or numbers or public policy. It is about convincing the public to get ready to go along with the latest anti-black assault and to do it in a way where it's going to be deniable. At least the racism part will have some sort of some sort of pro forma superficial deniability. And you can say it's about the virus, the virus. This is a lethal virus, you see. Well, all these white folks, they got the virus too. So what about them? Well, you know, it's, it's worse. The, the, the kind that these niggers had, this is a lethal kind, you know. Well, if it's mostly black people dying from it, as the white media likes to portray, why is it that you're so hot and bothered to protect black people all of a sudden? That's the whole point of this exercise. You're going to blame black people for something that was done to them. And by that, I ain't even talking about the virus. I'm talking about the crackdown that's going to be taking place to make sure that black people understand the lockdown ends for everyone except for you. This is the reason why I had to check some folks when they were saying that, well, you know, black folks do need to eat better and exercise. Let me tell you something. One of the biggest lies the white supremacy tries to push is the respectability politics line. That, well, if only black people would do better, then, oh, well, all this stuff wouldn't be happening. You see, you guys, you are your own worst enemy. Uh, this stuff is happening because of what you black people do. And it was no accident that you had the LGBT Surgeon General who decided that he was going to do some pandering, talking down to black folk. Well, you need to do it for your papa and your mima and all the rest of this. Like, who the hell do you think you are? He knows what his white handlers want him to do. He wants, they want him to get out there and he's going to be the black face who's going to talk down to black people. Well, you know, someone's going to tell you, Negras, that uh, you need to do it for your mima and your papa. And you know, you have those white supremacists laughing and going, <laughs> man, isn't that hilarious? Blaming the victim is how white supremacy encourages the public to cheerlead for the victim of white supremacy to be abused and attacked and killed. Blaming the victim is how you get the public to actually give a pat on the back to the enforcement arm of white supremacy when it murders a black person. Blaming the victim is how you justify the mass killing of black people. But like any good war, you first have to convince the public that action is necessary. And that, well, you got to prepare them for the idea that drastic action is going to be called for. That way, when they see it happen, they won't be looking and going, this is completely and thoroughly unjustified and uncalled for. The public mind must be positioned properly so that they will not question whatever action white supremacy intends to take. But how do you do that when there's absolutely no evidence to back up what you claim you want to do? When your rationale has no evidentiary basis, how do you back that up? How do you prop up that lie? That's where propaganda comes in. This is why the white media back in February got to work putting out stories on the internet where anytime they talked about coronavirus or if you think you have symptoms or how to know, they would always make sure that they use the image of a black person with those stories. This is what you call image training. 
You're creating a false association in someone's mind. Every time you talk about coronavirus, make sure you show a black person's face. Show the image of a black person. Anytime you say coronavirus, you make sure you put a black person up there. And that way, later on, when people accuse you of being racist for doing so well, we didn't say that it was black people. Yeah, you didn't say it yet, but you were setting it up, which they were, and they know exactly the game that they're playing. Now, back in February and January, there were practically no black people to speak of who had the virus. But as the propaganda arm of white supremacy knew, they were going to be changing that soon enough. White media talks about COVID-19 in the Bronx. And while it's Hispanics who happen to be the hardest hit by the virus, the white media still nonetheless ignores that demographic fact. Instead, they're so hot and bothered and worried about black people. They're just so concerned about black people. Well, you know, granted, black people don't lead the league in New York City when it comes to COVID-19. But, uh, you know, we need to be looking at the black community. They sure are getting hit hard by this virus, aren't they? They're trying to create an association with the virus and black people. Because the goal is going to be what needs to be done to curtail the spread of the virus. That's what it's really about. We're not attacking black people. We're not killing black people. We're not imprisoning black people. We are quarantining the virus. We're killing the virus. And don't expect to see anybody in the white media actually asking, where's the evidence of all this? ABC's own website ran a story back on the 10th where they did give some figures, albeit preliminary, and what they found was that the death rate in New York City from COVID-19 was almost the same as the percentage of the population. Broken down by race, the death rate from COVID-19 was almost equal to the racial percentage of the city. Blacks are about 22% of New York's population and about 28% of the deaths. And you know what? That's about right. This isn't some wildly lopsided death rate where black people are disproportionately represented among the dead and all oh, the black people are dropping like flies and everybody else is just looking to go, oh, look at all these Negroes. That's what the white media keeps telling you and they keep saying it with no evidence to back it up. And when you look at the numbers, you're going, what the hell are you guys getting all up in a getting into a lather about? Why are you guys working yourselves into a frenzy over this? The numbers are not at all disproportionate. They're taking a few percentage points and making that disproportionate. The white media is trying to invent a narrative that they're going to use to lay the groundwork for a post-pandemic racial lockdown on black people. That's what this is about. They want to say that lie until the public is able to say it in their sleep. Keep repeating the lie until the public knows it backward and forwards. That way, whenever you say COVID-19, they'll think, oh, you, oh, yeah, all those black people. Are, are black people still dying like flies from it? All those niggers, you know, they're, they're still spreading that disease. Huh? What's wrong with those people? You know, if they would just eat better and exercise, all oh, lazy bastards. That's, what the, that's the lie, the racist trope that the white media is playing on is being done across the board by all the big white media outlets. They want to make sure all of them are working together on this. The white media, they would have you believe that only black people are filling up all the hospitals and all the morgues. And that's just not true. And you can look at the white media's numbers. You don't have to tell you, these are not Professor Black Truth's numbers. These are the numbers the white media has. They'll sit there and make it sound like, oh, it's Armageddon in the black community. COVID-19 is just eating the black community alive. And then you look at the numbers and go, where the hell are you getting this from? So why are they saying something that even their own math doesn't back up? They just keep repeating the same old, anywhere that black people live, that's a coronavirus hotspot, wherever black people live. Make sure you put a black face there. They don't give any facts or figures to back up that assertion. Sure, they'll do some loose talk about death rates, but black people get inferior medical care compared to everyone else. So our death rate is higher from all illnesses and all causes of death. Not just COVID-19. Black people go to the same hospitals and see the same doctors as everyone else. And yet, for some reason, when we go to the hospital due to an illness or a health emergency, we're the ones who are far less likely to come out alive. Everybody else, their chances of coming out alive are about equal. But with us, for some dang reason, when we go into the hospital, our chances of coming out drop precipitously. So what that tells us is it's not coronavirus that's killing black people. It's the inherent racism of the American medical system. That's what's doing it. 
It's the fact that black people are forced to live under the harshest conditions of anybody on the planet, which takes a toll on anyone's health. So the second that we have to deal with any sort of illness, especially as we get older, you better believe that it's going to hit us harder. And the second you go into the hospitals, those doctors have already got your body bag laid out. They don't bother asking to see whether or not you got medical insurance first. The first thing they want to see is, uh, do you have some sort of donor ID? Does your driver's license say that you're an organ donor? That's the first thing the doctors want to find out when a black person is wheeled in. Does this person, have they given permission to give their organs? If they haven't, well, uh, that means we got to be extra neat with the sutures when we go ahead and sew them up. Make it a little bit harder for somebody to see that, yeah, we went ahead and took the organs anyway. I mean, hey, it's not like he was using them anymore, right? But what needs to be remembered is New York City happens to have a very densely, closely packed population. People, especially in the black community, you got multiple folks living, sometimes multiple generations living in the same accommodations. But once you get outside of New York City and start looking at the demographics among black people in COVID-19, you see that the white media narrative goes from simply being feeble to utterly collapsing. Consider this, the black population of New York state, and we're talking about the state here, is about 18%. That's according to the U.S. Census Bureau. And the black New York state death rate from COVID-19 outside of New York City, once you take New York City out of the equation, what's the statewide black death rate? 18%. You see, it happens to be the fact that people are packed like sardines on top of one another, especially black folks packed into having to live together in these stacked coffins like those projects and such. That's what's happening there. It's like people talk about the cruise ships and say, oh, those are just floating Petri dishes. Yeah, well, you got a bunch of Petri dishes on dry land, too. But you see, you don't get to talk about that. Nobody ever talks about the conditions there. And yet you would think that the entire black population in New York City would have it, but they don't. It's just not the case at all. But the white media is trying to push a narrative, trying to invent a narrative meant to justify the attacks and the uh, curtailment of our rights, further curtailment that's supposed to take place. They're trying to set the stage for that. Now, you see, I'm showing you the actual numbers from the white media. There is no disproportionate anything going on, yet the white media is hell-bound and determined to make black people into the face of this virus, and just like with Me Too, it's being done in order to set up an attack on us. And they're meanwhile ignoring the real epidemic, which is the white supremacist plague that has been absolutely ripping this country a new one for the longest time. They're ignoring all of that. You got white supremacists out in public waving their confederate flags loud and proud and the white media is just ignoring that nothing to say about it but the new york times in particular deciding that they were going to lead the charge to make black people the face of this virus because of the fact that i do happen to be a kind of curious type there was some other things that i want to look into just to see if the new york times was as concerned about other groups as they are about black people exactly a year before the coronavirus outbreak, there was another epidemic that had formed in New York City. Measles. Oh yeah, measles were backing in a big way in New York City, but uh, it had nothing to do with the black community. I guess that's why you didn't hear much about it. Instead, you had a huge measles outbreak among the ultra-Orthodox Jewish community. And yet, this was what was going on a year before coronavirus. This is what the big epidemic was in New York City a year before the coronavirus. But you didn't hear about it, did you? You have the ultra-Orthodox Jewish community who this measles outbreak was most prevalent among. And what had happened was you had a lot of Orthodox Jews who happened to have either visited or even come from areas of Israel and Europe where the measles are already spreading. Now, this sounds exactly like the coronavirus, doesn't it? Yes, because that's pretty much what it is. And yet, that being the case, you haven't heard much about it, have you? It's because this is not something that fits the white media narrative. This is not something that they can use to justify demonizing black people. So as far as they're concerned, well, it gets a one-and-done mention, and after that, we're done with it. 
you had the outbreak of a disease, a dangerous one, among a particular minority group in New York City, and yet the white media was not talking about how the Hasidic community, the ultra-Orthodox community in New York City, that's a hot spot for measles. Wasn't talking about, they didn't have the Surgeon General talking down to them. Didn't have anybody deciding that they were going to be made into the face of measles in America. Oh, how could this disease that the country had thought had been defeated, now it's back and it's in the Jewish community and, you know, no articles that were trying to cast aspersions on them like, what's wrong with these people? They didn't, weren't doing that. In fact, there was very little mention of it at all. You did not even know that it happened until I brought it to you. So you've got an apples-to-apples apples comparison between how the white media reports on sicknesses and illnesses between black people and then everyone else. You've got an apples-to-apples apples comparison right here. This is what was going on in New York City. But you didn't hear about it, did you? Nobody was trying to turn ultra-Orthodox Jews into the face of measles. Nobody was trying to say, oh, these guys, if only they would eat better and exercise, if only they would wash their hands. It must be a hygiene issue with these people. Nobody was trying to justify any sort of attacks on Jews. Nobody was trying to justify corralling them or rounding them up, or we've got to do something to make sure they don't spread this virus. Nobody was trying to say, trying to cast any aspersions on them. No setting up any sort of future oppression of them. Because they're not black. If they were black, on the other hand, it would be exactly the opposite. And it didn't stop with this measles thing either. On Tuesday of this week, just a few days ago, the New York Times ran another story that they didn't give a ton of uh, ink to, didn't give a ton of attention to it. But in this one, they're talking about how the coronavirus has affected Hasidic Jews in New York. Now, the headline says plague on a biblical scale. Yeah, but you wouldn't know it by the way the New York Times and the rest of the white media has been reporting on it. Why, you would think that the Bronx is the hot spot, the way the media puts it. You would think the Bronx is the only place where the coronavirus is prevalent in New York City. But when you read this article, it turns out it's a little more complex than that. As one of the Hasidic Jews said, there is not a single Hasidic family that has been untouched. Not a single family untouched? Now, I'm sorry, but you can't say that about the black community in New York City. Hell, we got black folks all the time going, I don't know anybody. Oh, I, I'm hearing about it on the news, but it's like, man, I don't know if this is true or not because I don't know anyone who it's affected. These guys on the other hand say not a single family. They ain't talking about relatives or friends or we all know somebody. No, they said not a single family has been untouched. And that it's a plague on a biblical scale. But that's not the way that it's being reported in the white media. You wouldn't know this unless Professor Truth brought it to you. And the New York Times does point out that the city doesn't track corona deaths by religion, but... You had some concerned Hasidic citizens in their own media, and they have estimated that there's 700 members of their community who have died from this disease. 700. And by the way, the uh, numbers of Hasidic Jews in New York does not, does not factor into the millions. Now, if you want to talk about per capita and such... Why does this not get the per capita treatment? Doesn't even get mentioned. The white media is being very, very careful about how they report this. They're not rushing to try to make it where ultra Orthodox Jews could be even inadvertently made into the face of the coronavirus or even factor into it. You wouldn't even know that this thing was a plague on their community, a plague of biblical proportions. You wouldn't even know that unless you had the black media inform you of it. Now, when you read further on in this New York Times piece, they mention Rockland County and that it has one of the highest per capita infection rates in the nation. And by the way, just for your information, fun fact, Rockland County is basically a Republican enclave. I just thought I'd throw that in there. But I'll say again, Rockland County, New York, has one of the highest per capita infection rates in the nation when it comes to COVID-19. 
Think about that. One of the highest per capita infection rates in the nation. But again, you would not know that if you got all your information from the white media. And when it comes to the demographics of Rockland County, well, I guess the demographics are the reason why the white media doesn't mention that. So Rockland County is not going to feature prominently in the white media. It doesn't fit the narrative. So right there, you got an example that you would think would be prime for the white media to jump on. But this is a matter of when you're trying to create the idea that black people are the face of a disease, you can't just point to some place where there's a few Negroes out in the boondocks. Now you need something significant. And then you go ahead and say, oh my God, um, black people are 22% of New York's population, but 28% of coronavirus fatalities, 26% higher than their number in the, oh my God, it's, it, it, surely this is the end of those Negroes. All of a sudden it's save the whales, you know, save the Negroes. That's how you know there's a freaking con job going on here. That's how you know. They have no problem telling any lie necessary to try to make black people into the face of this virus. But when it comes to telling the truth and just doing just doing basic research, just doing basic journalism, well, if it's black people, we can't have that allowed because the media doesn't exist to inform. It exists to indoctrinate. Besides, we don't want to be sitting here talking telling any sort of media narrative that makes it where you might have non-blacks turned into the face of some sort of malady or some sort of social ill. And if you doubt that they know exactly what the hell they're doing, New York Times also mentioned that the Hasidic community leaders, they did not like be anyone mentioning that they had violated the state's no gathering order, the governor's, the governor's gathering ban they don't like like that and the reason why they said they feel singled out by the news media they feel singled out now there's a phrase that you haven't seen the white media using when it comes time to talk about black folks in COVID 19 they don't sit there saying you know what the black community feels singled out now, they don't want to give the idea that, whoops, <laughs> maybe we're coming down a little bit hard on them or that black people fully realize that they're being singled out. Instead, what they do is they try to push this line that, oh, black people, they know that they are. They know that they're the center of this disease. They know that there's something wrong with them. See, even the black community knows that they're wrong. That's the lie that they try to push. But when it comes to non-black groups, all of a sudden it's a matter of, well, the reason that they're not going along, the reason that they the reason that they keep having these brushes with the law and all of these gathering ban violations is well, well, they feel singled out by the news media. They feel like the news media is trying to is trying to point the finger at them and trying to single them out, and they feel put upon. Yeah, you know, the white media has no problem upbraiding themselves as long as the individuals who are give who are lodging the complaint are not black if you're black on the other hand well you know you ain't got a leg to stand on and it's going to be all about some pork chop preacher or some political prostitute who the white media selected and propped up some bootlick who's going to sit there and say well the black community um if we would just eat better and exercise and do it for your papa and do it for your mima and you know that's the kind of crap that the white media likes to repeat it's meant to put black people on the defensive, or better yet, just make sure that there's no narrative, there is absolutely not a word that counters the white media narrative. There's no need to have to refute any claims the black community makes if you don't print anything the black community actually says. Just go ahead and pick those Negroes who you already have put words in their mouths. They already know what the script is, and they're going to go ahead and say it, and that's all you need to do, and then things are going to go on as they always have. Because you see, also in the story, by the way, and I just thought that this also needed to be mentioned, they also show pictures of um, some of these uh, gathering of these ultra-Orthodox Jews, and they were in line, in a food line in New York City. And the thing is, I'm not seeing anybody upbraiding them about social distancing or any criticism about why aren't they having their faces covered or oh this is the so this is why covid-19 is running rampant in the ultra orthodox jewish community why look nobody's got their faces covered clearly they're all standing jam packed together they can't even observe social distancing 
See, nobody's blaming the victims here. Nobody's trying to say that there must be some sort of moral flaw among them, that all these people, they just won't do better. Nobody's doing that. But with the black community, on the other hand, you can have black folks standing out there looking like a freaking doctor's convention. Everybody got their freaking faces covered, got gloves on, looking like they're all getting ready to perform or open heart surgery. And yet what we'll be hearing is, why aren't these people social distancing? If black folks social distance, then why the hell are you people outside? If black people are all inside, well, why the hell are you people together? Uh, everybody should just be in a separate broom closet somewhere. No matter what black people do, it will never be right. Everybody else, on the other hand, well, it's, not, it's only bad if black people do it. But as we've seen with the white media and all of their made-up phony statisticulation, hell, it's wrong even when black people don't do it. And the reason that I showed the image here of this um, Jewish gathering outside of this food line is they always want to make sure that it's, a, it's images of black people, that, oh, it's all these black people who are looking for a handout, or it's all these black people who are down and out. It's all these black... See, black people, they're the ones who are, who are why the soup kitchens exist. If, if these Negroes would just get off their lazy behinds and stop being shiftless and just put in a hard day's work... They're very careful with the images to make sure that they train the public through constant images only of black people. Black people lead on the nightly news on the crime blotter. Oh, when it comes time to talk about poverty, we're going to you can have a line full of a thousand white folks. But if there's five black people, you better believe the black people will be in that picture. All five of them will be in that picture. And they'll crop the image and get in real tight. And it's like, well, we want to make sure that that we show that we make sure that there's all the black people that we can possibly squeeze into the image. If there's too many non-blacks around, well, we're not going to be getting them in the frame. We just want to make sure there's just the black people. This is social programming through the use of lying images. Because as soon as you show images of non-black people who are trying to get some food, who are waiting in line, who don't have enough money to make ends meet, all of a sudden that falls down the memory hole. We're not trying to publicize that for the public. And by the way, nobody's going to be asking what kind of shoes these people are wearing. But you see, when you got non-black people who are trying to get some sort of assistance or some sort of aid, nobody's asking what kind of shoes are they wearing? Uh, what kind of shirt do they have? Any designer jeans on? Uh, what kind of cars did they drive there in? Nobody's sitting there picking them apart, trying to find out, uh, are you guys splurging on something? You know, you people don't really need help. They don't do, they don't sit there and nitpick everybody else. They just do that with us. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out because this is what family we need to be aware of. We don't need to be letting the bad guys control the narrative and we need to be aware that this is what they're doing. They're constructing a lie. They're singling us out and they're doing it deliberately. There are plenty of examples that you can show of tons of non-black groups who clearly the coronavirus is running roughshod over, but they're singling us out and it's not because they intend to do us any favors. This is how a race war is carried out. This is how a race war is conducted. The first phase of every proactive, every aggressive war the individual who intends to carry out aggression first, the first thing he's got to do is come up with some sort of phony baloney justification for it. But the white supremacists have outsmarted themselves on this one, as they have with a number of other things. Why is there so much concern about the black death rate from COVID-19? It's because the white death rate is so high. White Americans are the ones with the degrees. They're the ones who work from home, the ones who can telecommute. They're the ones who can shelter in. Black people are the ones who are most likely to have to work in an essential job. That means a job that requires you to leave your home because your job can't be digitized. It can't be done over the Internet. If anything, the real miracle is why the hell is it the COVID-19 rate among black people isn't sky high? They're, that thing, it should just be ubiquitous among black folks, but it's not. The COVID-19 death rate among whites ought to be near zero, but it's not. That when you got somebody like freaking Chris Cuomo, who I'm convinced is the descendant of Mr. Ed, when this guy gets coronavirus and his family apparently gets it too, or one of them was, di I think his wife was diagnosed with it, it's a matter of how the hell that happened. These are people who got money. They come from money. 
They work for big corporations where they got all this fancy health care and they can have all the means put in place to make sure they don't come in contact with anybody. And yet these guys, these are the people who are up here getting this stuff. Brooke Baldwin, that skank, she gets it too and a number of others. How the hell is that possible? These guys are the main ones who should be having the most ability to shelter in, and they do, but the thing about it is, as far as they're concerned, the disease doesn't affect them. They figure since they're immune from the law and that white, that white privilege makes it where they never get in trouble for anything, well, that disease will know better than to mess with me why I'm immune from this disease too, just like I'm immune from the law. What they found out was they're not. And this is what white supremacy is concerned about. They've stolen much of the world's wealth, and yet, for some strange reason, you got that global white birth rate that's in full decline. How the hell do you have so much abundance and you're free from want, and yet your numbers are plummeting as if you were being picked off by an alien invasion? How the hell does that happen? You have the ability to shelter in, you have the ability to sequester yourself from the world the same way you have from reality, and yet, for some strange reason, the COVID-19 rate is still very high regardless. Is this stuff able to penetrate walls? Well, apparently it must be. So yeah, this is what the white supremacists are really concerned about. As far as they're concerned, they're looking at every little outbreak of every little illness could potentially be the last one for the white supremacists. That's what they're concerned about. And I guess as far as they're concerned, they might as well go ahead and have some fun before the before they embrace the darkness forever. I guess that's what's going on with all of this. You need to lift the lockdown. Let us have some fun before we die. I guess that's what the white supremacists are thinking. That's fine. Let them think whatever they want, but they are not going to do whatever they want, especially not when it comes to black people. Family, you better be on full alert about what's going on here. Because as they begin to announce that, oh, we're lifting restrictions, the beaches are going to open and we're going to start having it where the clubs and the and the non-essential businesses are going to be able to open again. What's going to be happening is they're going to say, oh, but but, you know, the fight's not over. And hey, we do know that come the fall flu season, COVID-19 is going to have a resurgence. Yeah, they're getting ready for a long-term strategy, one that's going to take a few years to put into effect, but it's going to be a matter of desensitizing the public and getting the public used to the idea that black people are getting rounded up. Well, you see, it's so much higher among black people. That disease is so much higher among black people, you know, and it's all their own fault. Well, uh, ain't we going to be talking about these ultra-Orthodox communities and the Hispanic community? And says, well, you know, that's not important. What's important is the black community. The black community. That's what's important here. That's what's really important here. And we can't take our eye off, the, off these niggers. I mean, I'll take our eye off the ball. It's the black community that matters. You better learn to understand when you're being racially targeted. You better learn to understand the white supremacy does not miss an opportunity to try to turn any circumstance into a chance to attack us. If they start off with something that seems like, oh, there's too many bad headlines that happen to have a white face. Well, we got to change that real quick. Let's make sure we put a black one out there.